Hello. In this video, we are going to look at specific examples of molecules that belong to the axial groups. The first large class of such molecules are the homonuclear diatomics. And these are the molecules of the form X bonded to X. So we generally can write this as X2. And this does not matter whether the bonding between the two atoms is a single bond, double bond, triple bond, quadruple bond. The type of bonding doesn't matter because whenever we have two atoms in a molecule, the molecule must be linear. And if both of the atoms are identical, it is going to be homonuclear. All of these types of molecules we recognize um, right away as being belonging to the point group D infinity H. But what are some important examples of such molecules? Well, important examples would be hydrogen, H2. We have oxygen, O2 as dioxygen. We have the very important gas, nitrogen, N2. You would recognize that all of the halogens are commonly found as homonuclear diatomics. So we have such important elements as F2, fluorine. We have Cl2, which is chlorine, is a gas. Bromine is typically found as Br2, which is a liquid. Can just put these notes here. And iodine, I2, is generally found as a purple solid. So the halogens span the range of states of matter from gases to liquid to solid. And they are all homonuclear diatomics. So these molecules all belong to the point group D infinity H. A second class of important uh, molecules that belong to the axial groups are the heteronuclear diatomic molecules. So here we have the heteronuclear diatomics. And each of these can be represented in the form X y where x and y are two different elements and the chemical formula would be as shorthand as x y again because we only have two atoms in the molecule the structure has to be linear and we recognize that these particular molecules belong to the point group c infinity v so we would like to look at some specific examples of molecules that belong to this particular point group. Among the most important compounds that belong to this would be CO, carbon monoxide, the very important poisonous gas. We have nitric oxide, NO. We have iodine monochloride, which is an interhalogen compound. Another important interhalogen compound is bromine monofluoride, BRF. And then probably the most important classes of these heteronuclear diatomic molecules are going to be the halo acids. So we have such important acids as the weak acid, hydrogen fluoride, which is hydrofluoric acid when it's dissolved in water. We have the gas hydrogen chloride, which forms the strong acid hydrochloric acid when it's dissolved in water. We have the gas hydrogen bromide, HBr, which forms the strong acid hydrobromic acid when dissolved in water. And finishing out the sequence, we have the gas hydrogen iodide, which forms the strong acid hydriotic acid when dissolved in water. 
So these are eight of the most important examples of heteronuclear diatomic molecules that belong to the symmetry group C infinity V. We can now examine some examples of polyatomic molecules that belong to the axial groups. One important example is the gas nitrous oxide. And what is important in this case is to recognize that the actual structure of the molecule is, is such. And by the SEPR arguments, we would recognize that this particular molecule has to be linear. And we'd also notice that relative to the center, that if we try to have a mirror plane from the left side to the right side, that, that would reflect nitrogen into oxygen, which doesn't work. So therefore, since there's only two possible axial groups, we see that it does not belong to D infinity H. We can immediately assign this molecule to the group C infinity V for nitrous oxide. Another extremely important example of a linear molecule is carbon dioxide. And if we work out the Lewis dot structure for this molecule, we see that it has carbon double bound to two different oxygen atoms. Again, by the SEPR arguments, we would recognize that this particular molecule has to be linear. And now we notice that if we reflect through a mirror plane going through the central carbon atom, it would reflect oxygen into oxygen. And therefore, we do have a horizontal mirror, and this molecule belongs to the point group D infinity H. Next, we can look at the important liquid solvent carbon disulfide, CS2. And once we are familiar with the structure of carbon dioxide and the periodic relationships in the periodic table, we can almost immediately write down the structure of carbon disulfide merely by replacing the oxygens with sulfur atoms. And we have an identical structure, which is also linear. By the same reasoning that we use for carbon dioxide, we can immediately recognize that carbon disulfide belongs to the point group D infinity H. But how about if we replace just one of the sulfurs with an oxygen so that we end up with a molecule OCS, which goes by the name of carbonyl sulfide. And the structure of carbonyl sulfide is like this. It's as if we took carbon dioxide and replaced just one of the oxygens with a sulfur. This will also be a linear molecule if we use the SEPR arguments. But we notice that if we try to find a mirror plane through the central carbon atom, it would reflect oxygen and the sulfur, which are not identical. So therefore, there is no horizontal mirror plane, and we can assign this particular molecule to the point group C infinity V. Do we have any examples where we have more than three atoms in a linear molecule? Yes, we do. And the most important example of this is the important organic chemical acetylene, which has the chemical formula C2H2. And we recognize that the structure features a carbon-carbon triple bond in the center of the molecule by either VSEPR arguments or by understanding that when we have carbon triple bound to carbon, we have SP hybridization. And SP hybridization leads to linearity of the molecule. Again, we recognize that all four atoms of acetylene are going to be in a line. In this particular point, the central region, the center of the molecule, is actually the midpoint between the two carbon atoms. I might just kind of represent this with a red dot here. So now if we're looking for a horizontal mirror plane, we would look for a mirror plane going through that little red dot, and it would reflect hydrogen to hydrogen and carbon to carbon. So therefore, this molecule has a horizontal mirror plane 
and it belongs to the point group d infinity h. Slowly but surely, we can substitute the hydrogen atoms of this particular molecule with halogens. And the most common halogen they would find would be chlorine. So one example, we can replace the hydrogen atom on the right with a chlorine atom. Again, this is going to be a linear molecule, except now if we try to mirror the hydrogen over to this side, we'd have to have a mirror going from hydrogen into chlorine. They are not identical. So this replacement of hydrogen with chlorine converts the molecule from belonging to the D infinity H point group to the C infinity V point group. Well, let's see what happens if we continue this idea. If now we replace the second hydrogen with a chlorine atom and see what happens. Well, now we replace that with chlorine. The general structure in the center of the molecule doesn't change. So we have a dichloroacetylene. Now, if we look for a mirror plane, it will reflect chlorine into chlorine, carbon into carbon. So now we've returned to the point group symmetry D infinity H. I thank you for your attention. Have a good one. Have a good one.